Hi everyone, I'm testing out a new system where I actually share some of my um, workflow and I brain out loud while I work. So I'd love it if you could give this video a look and give me some feedback on what you think. It, it's about 45 minutes for anyone who's really interested in my systems. But yeah, you can get a, a fair idea by just skimming through it. Thanks so much. I've got a nearly 40 centimeter piece here. And I've no idea what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm just going to freestyle with this, but I'm going to try and keep it fairly simple so that it's easy to understand. So I'll just start typically with <clears throat> finding the center of my canvas so that I can create my six points. So I draw one circle and then mark off the same radius width around the circle. And if I do it right, I end up with six perfectly spaced points. This is the beginning of almost every piece that I do. I use this measurement because it's to me just so divine. So you can see there, six nice points and just very carefully here I make sure that I'm going through the center point while I'm lining up both sides very carefully Okay, that's pretty good. Now, from there, I'll grab my other compass. I've got a smaller compass as well as that very large one. <clears throat> and I'm going to make some smaller circles. I'm going to start fairly big. I'm not even going to measure this. I'm going to start fairly big with the spacing. And then as I get closer to the center, I'm just going to shrink that spacing a little bit each step. So this one is roughly two thirds of the previous. And this never has to be perfect. This can be done fairly roughly if you want, as long as it continues to get smaller and smaller. So you can see that's roughly two thirds of that one. And again, You can measure it if you want, of course. Maybe just one more. Lovely. And now what I might do is, I'm gonna find the center of these points by taking my compass and making two arcs that look like they're roughly the center. And you can see I end up with two points there and then find the center of that. So now if I wander around here and go tap, tap each point, it's gonna cross over at that central point and give me another marker that I can then use to create some more straight lines. Beautiful. Again, very careful coming through that center line, making sure that we hit in that same middle point that we've done with the other ones. Nice. It feels really good when you actually tap over your compass points with the pencil. It's a really good indication that you're being precise. So I can feel it tap through that center point there then. You can see I've got a very basic 12-sided structure with radials, or oh sorry, with um, concentric circles that get a little bit smaller in their spacing each time. Didn't measure this, was going for roughly two thirds as they get smaller. Hmm. 
and I'll just make a central end point. And then what I might actually do is run through each of these by going just next to them. One line next to them as we go through. I'm just going to make this a tiny bit more complex. So I haven't really got a plan with this piece, but what I have got is a nice pre-mixed palette that I know that if I start from the center and just work my way out, it's actually gonna give me plenty of fun to have. Now, looking at this, I can see an opportunity to create one more line there. So I might just do that first before I start painting. So I'm gonna to connect to that edge, the center, and that there and just carefully run one line all the way through there. And like I said, I don't really have a plan, but I've got this beautiful palette that what I might do is start with dots with a tail moving outwards and it's going to give this painting some outward energy. So I'll just get stuck straight in. At the moment, I actually want a fair amount of paint on this tool because I'm going to be making tails. So if you look, you can see I give my brush this little twirl and what that does is actually wraps paint around the tool so it picks up a bit extra. I was doing that automatically then <laughs> without thinking about it, but it's worth noting that if you want to pick up a little bit of extra paint, this is the best way. And also sometimes when I want a lot, I'll scoop through and that actually picks up a great deal more than just this little twirl. I want a medium amount of paint, so I'm just twirling. And sometimes I can tell not quite enough paint comes down on the drop, so I actually tap it twice because I want all of these dots to be kind of uniform. My trusty pink tail tool here. And this is a really meditative state. So what I'm doing is dragging dots to this line that I've created here. So I'm going to start from the center of the dot and carefully just drag it to that line. It's a very meditative process for me. I really enjoy it. And towards the end of the, the stroke, I actually lift the tool off. So I would use very light pressure here and towards the end of the stroke, bring the tool up slightly so that it actually makes that stroke a bit thinner. Some strokes need double. There we go. Next color, and I'm gonna to go to this spot here and it's only very slightly larger. And again, I'm doing my little twirl. Little twirl, drop. So the habit to, for this cycle seems to be little twirl, dot, dot. So I'm twirling and then I'm tapping twice to get the amount of paint down that I want. And the size of the dot, because I want my dot to be slightly bigger than the one that's already there. Now the first one looks a little bit thin there, so I'm just going to top it up. Nice, very clean. Trusty pink tail tool again. And this time I might go to the bottom of these dots here. Center of the dot, drag. 
Yeah. And this is two strokes. So what I'm doing is dragging from the center of the dot down and then dragging from the edge of the dot. As carefully as I can. That one's actually been split too much pressure. Center of the dot, edge of the dot. Center of the dot, drag, edge of the dot, drag. Center of the dot, drag, edge of the dot, drag. Center, edge. Oh, that one's got a little blob in it, that's okay. I might clean that up. It's a little bit tight. Center, edge. That little blob's okay. Mm. For the sake of cleanliness, I'm just going to tidy up. So what happened was a tiny little blob of dried paint came out with it then. And I'm just tidying it up and then going back to the same tool that I used and making sure I've got enough paint in that spot and then dragging the tail out again carefully. Nice. That was worth fixing. Next one, next color, bigger tool here. And we're going to drag to the edge of this circle, I'd say. Okay, bigger tool, next color. That color's a bit empty, so I'm going to have to swirl properly there. Swirl it right up to pick up a fair amount of paint. That's better. Swirl. Tap twice. Swirl. Tap twice. And it's easy for me to remember which color I'm on at the moment because it's the third one. So at some points it gets quite complex to remember which one. Right now it's quite easy, but I might just turn this palette slightly so that my wrist lands at exactly that point. That way I don't have to actually think too much. A feeling this is going to be a very psychedelic piece like closed eye visual and you can see sometimes when I'm tapping I just put a couple of taps until it looks right it comes with having painted millions of dots <laughs> okay being careful here not to touch those yellow dots so while I'm dragging I'm just being very conscious about not connecting to that yellow dot. Coming very close to it though, just to the edge of that guide that's there. Beautiful. It's already starting to look really nice, I think. Next color, next tool. So I've got all these different tools here. I've got metal ones and wooden ones that I've made myself. And I find the wooden ones really good for these next phases. A little bit easier to work with than the metal ones. <clears throat> next color. Just pondering if I should skip. So I'm looking at the spacing here, wondering if I should go to this one instead. But what I might do is just start on the outside of this. So I've got a little bit of extra room for my tail because the dot's going to be fairly big. So I'm kind of improvising here a little so that the pattern continues well enough. Nice color. Number four. And there's not much paint in this one. This is a palette from a previous piece. So 
going to be a little bit trickier. I might actually put a proper tool under it. Oops. So that all of the paint runs down to one end. And so that it's easier to pick up like so. Oh, not really working either. Scoop. Dab. It's a little bit tricky. Just got to be careful picking up the paint that I don't misshape the tool. I might actually pause this. And I'm just going to take my spray bottle and add a little water to that. So it's easier to pick up and drop off this tool. So it's probably about three drops from my spray gun. And you'll see now it works so much better. Might have to do that one twice. I should have checked the paint levels on this one before I got stuck in, but we'll make it through. That little funny twirl. So what I'm doing here is I'm going tap, tap, and then I'm actually turning my tool around so that it covers more space with the dot. Because I want these dots to be a bit bigger than they are becoming with the limited amount of paint that I've got in there. All works out though. Now, back to my trusty pink tool. And always being careful of any air bubbles when you're doing this. If you drag an air bubble, it's going to um, distort the shape of your tail. So I just pop any little air bubbles I see. Carefully. This one's three strokes. I'm dragging from the center down. And you can see it only goes a short stroke, center again, and then halfway down the tail. So what that does is gives you a really clean taper to the tail. So center, edge, and then halfway down the tail, center, edge, halfway down the tail, Ooh, that one split, dots, I mean there's air bubbles in there, careful, center, edge, tail. That one only needed two, two, air bubble, I just mixed up a few more colors, made them a bit stronger. And looking at it, that one's actually a bit of a big jump. So I'm gonna take some of this and scoop it into that one and just improvise by making a richer one of them, which will land it in between these two for me. <clears throat> yeah, that's nice. Maybe one more. And I filled up the rest of these a little bit as well because I hated that feeling of not having enough paint on my tool. Now, yep. So by rights, this should work much better than the previous pass. And I'll go to the edge of that dot again. Could still do it with more paint. Oh, that's much better. So this might be a double tap. So that time I tried dragging it through to scoop up and it seems that it picks up a fair bit more paint. Still have to tap it a few times. That dot's a bit misshapen as a result. So when I drag it, the tool picks up more paint on one side than the other. 
which then makes the dot misshapen. So I'm just going to stick to my little swirl and be patient. I'm not going to rush this because it's a very simple piece. We'll get through it quickly. Carefully now, the center of the dot down. And that was the center twice then, center. It's a fairly long tail, so I don't mind going from the center twice. Yeah, that works. that one a little. Nice clean pass. Ooh, there's one little chunk there. Worked out. So you can see these colors are gradually stepping out and that's creating like a kind of a 3D, three dimensional effect. I'm really happy with it so far. Now, next tool up and these guys have a bit more paint in them. So hopefully it's not gonna fight me as much it did with, as it did with the previous ones. Much better. I might actually have these dots fall back down to smaller from here. So this will be the biggest ones or the previous ones will be the biggest ones. And then I'm going to have the dots fade back down to smaller dots again. That's going to create like a three dimensional effect, but it's going to fall back down again. So it's going to come up to here and then go down to there using the length of the tail and the size of the dots. Looking good. Very happy with how clean and simple this piece is so far. I'm just going to redo that first dot because it didn't end up with as much paint as the others did. Okay, Ooh, a little bit more.
Just thinking if I wouldn't do a reversal yet or something. I'll keep this pattern going exactly the same because we've reached that sort of junction point where those extra lines are. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything there. But for now, very carefully, the longest tails that we've had so far. So that was four strokes then. One, two, three, four, five even. One, two, three, four. Five. Center, center, edge, halfway, almost at the end. So center of the dot, drag once, center of the dot, drag twice, edge of the dot, because I don't want as much paint, and then halfway down the dot. What that does is if I drag from the center, it brings a lot more paint, so I'm like loading up the tail, and then when I drag from the edge, it just extends it and makes it thinner. And when I drag from halfway down the tail, it just extends it and makes it thinner as well. So it's become very intuitive for me. And it's interesting for me to actually talk about it because it makes me look at things that have happened over doing this thousands of times that have become automated for me. And I get to share them with you so that you become very efficient very quickly. Oh, don't like that little bit of mess that I've made there. Just gonna pick up the end of that tail. Then with care. Pick up some paint. That'll do. Yeah. Okay. It's looking really nice at the moment. So what I can actually see here now that I didn't plan for is that we've got these great lines down here that actually connect the tips of these dots. So I've got a feeling that in the structures that we do after this, because this is just the first pass, that I might harness those lines a little. I'm not sure what, but they're speaking to me now. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out when we get there. Now, smaller dots. So we're going back down in tool size, and I'd say I want just one more circle for myself. So I hate, <laughs> I hate taking a compass to the canvas after I've started painting. So I'm just going to be very careful here and not talk. And get the very edge. That's just because I think I'm going to want to offset some of these as we get there. And I might just put one more in between those two, the outer two. So in here, drop one in the center. So what I've just done is made a kind of a fall off where you see they get closer to each other as they go there. Now they get closer to each other as they go down to this edge as well. Just pondering. I've got one more color to do before I start messing with the pattern that we've just created. Smaller dots. And I'll probably do shorter tails as well on this one. Sometimes if the dot, the first dot that I tap down is a bit misshapen by me swirling and picking up the paint, I turn the tool 90 degrees before I do the second dot. So you can see my thumb just moving there a little bit. That's just rotating the tool so that it creates a more round shaped dot if it misshapes it first. Okay.
and I'll just take this line to this edge here, the tail. And basically it's, I'm dragging, because I want quite a long tail there, dragging from the center twice first. Center, drag, center, drag, and then edge, and then tip. Center, drag, center, drag, edge, tip. Lovely, really nice pattern. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited actually now about these supporting structures here and what we can do with them. So I'm very curious what's gonna eventuate there. Now we have decisions to make. So before we were following this direct radials and we've got these offset radials here where we've come off the center of those and yeah, I'd like to hit this and this. So we're doubling up basically and splitting out and then we'll do these ones. I'm not sure. I'll just do those for now and then I'll figure out the rest as we go. <clears throat> Smaller tool again. This is the smallest of the wooden tools. Okay. And this time just a single tap. Don't need much here now because we're shrinking our dots. They're going back to smaller again as they come towards the edges. And you can see quite noticeably, visually, we've broken the pattern that we had all the way on the inside. So instead of having this pattern go all the way to the edges, it breaks off here and becomes something else. And I've got a feeling it's going to look a little bit messy for a while until we add in those supporting structures, which are going to um, connect to these, in inverted commas, broken bits that we've just started on. Lovely, it was really clean. <clears throat> it always gets a little bit tricky with spacing around the edge, so I just put my hand there to keep everything really clean. And I'm just gonna take this line, these tails to this edge here and no further. And I generally like to do all of one direction first, because otherwise I'm twisting my wrist to try and get that side. So I'll figure the second side after I do these. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky. I want to get the right angle. So I'm actually moving up the palette and dragging towards me. That's why I waited to do one side first before tackling the other one. Otherwise I'm switching back and forth every time. And I think it's about the, the angle of my wrist that helps me create a clean arc in this direction. That's why there's the changeover. Nice. Yeah, wow. 
I really like the way that it's splitting off towards the edge now. So I'm happy with the, the direction shift that we've made there. And I think going down to smaller dots as well is going to really help scatter it out, like make it look like it's scattering towards the edge. So looking at it, I will go here and here and then use the last row for that outer edge there. Not sure how many colors I've got. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just trying to figure out which bloody color I'm up to. So it's this one here. And we're going to the metal tool. Yeah. Yeah. Right on the dot. Right on the dot. So I'm putting these points where the radial crosses the concentric circles. Legs and tails again. Very carefully, because I've, I've, yeah, it's very hard at the edge here, so great care. Using my hand here as a support because I can't really lean on the edge of the canvas anymore. And I'm also holding the edge of the canvas with my left hand to keep it in position so that I don't move it with my right hand. So that's a bit of teamwork here. down to the last color here and very carefully with this tool I'm just going to cleanly drop dots there I might actually leave these as dots I'm not sure if I even want to put tails on them probably will knowing me carefully I think if I do put tails, they'll be very short. So I'm not gonna try and extend them very far at all.
gentle little tales. <clears throat> nice. So I'm just going to use that line that's there, the radial, sorry, the concentric as a guide for where to stop these tails. And it is a little bit tricky to do both, same as that last pass. So I'm going to do just this side first, all the way through, and then come back and do the other side. And this one is one stroke from the center, one stroke from the edge, one stroke from the center, one stroke from the edge. Okay, very careful. with this, I'll have to try it going this way. It's a really awkward angle to get it from, but it's not a very long stroke, so I can get away with a little bit. So by my internal language, I would call this piece very masculine or very disciplined, meaning that at this stage of it, it hasn't had much intuitive or intuition take the wheel from me and do fancy things. So I'm just at this stage following my original plan of having the dots get bigger. Oh, okay, that, that edge is intuition. So all the way to here, is discipline and focus and then here is where the intuition sort of kicked in and they seem harmoniously balanced so at the moment this piece is 80 percent discipline 20 percent intuition we'll let that dry and literally i have no plan now from here so from here on in it's probably going to be a series of decisions where i focus sit have a look at it try and get a plan happening and then start with that plan and allow some intuition to take hold. The plan will obviously have something to do with these lovely star shapes in there, but we'll get to that soon. Thank you for watching.